how do people tune you again from Caesar graphics welcome to my channel today i'm going to be teaching you how to create a party poster for a five-year-old child so if you need the exercise file for this tutorial simply make use of the link in the description section of this video so sit back relax and keep watching So we need a new document to start this project so i already click on file and select the new project button and then i'm going to make this um project debra because that's the name of the little girl and i'm going to make my width 720 height is going to be 900 resolution is going to be 72 my color mode is going to be on rgb because i'm planning to post this on my instagram page okay then i'm going to leave every other settings as is and i'm going to select the create uh, button all right so now let's go straight to illustrator and create a 3d object so i have um a frame size of 800 by 800 pixel here so for those of you that don't understand what i'm saying so i'm going to click on file and select the new button here and my width is going to be 800 here and height is 800 here so but because i already have my app bot set i'm going to hit the escape key on my keyboard to take away the new document window and i'm going to select the text tool now and click to activate my text layer and i'm going to hit figure 5 on my keyboard then i'll use the move tool to make this bigger by holding down shift and drag now it's possible your version of illustrator may look different from mine i'm using illustrator 2021 all right so if you want to see the same setting the same layout with what i have here try upgrade to adobe illustrator 2021 so i'm, I'm going to make my character to be um, antique that's the name of the font we're going to be using today it's called antique all right so this is it here all right then i'm going to make it a bit bigger all right and for now i'm just going to position that here then i'll go straight to the exercise file and drag my png hat shape in here and scale this down because these are the two objects we're going to be using to create our 3d object here so we need to convert this to a vector format so we'll be able to change the color of the object so i'm going to click the image trace option here or button and i'm going to select expand again to convert it to a to a vector object then I'll go to object here and hit on group because we need to take away this white box around our object here. So I'm going to hit the delete key and now we have a vector. Then I'm um, looking at the, um, the corners of my, my vector object here. Uh, we have these sharp corners here. So we need to convert these sharp corners to a more smooth corners because making it look that way is going to make us have that balloon, you know, look. Uh, we need to use the pen tool to take away some of the points so i'm going to start with this and i'm going to move this here like so uh, move this here and i'm going to zoom out for now and you know what let's just take out one of the points again so i'm going to just take this one out oops all right this is good then i'll use the direct selection tool to just make this curve like so i'm gonna click on this and just select curve here and if i zoom out we have this i'm just gonna move this like so and move this here like so all right now make sure you still have this curved part because this curved part is what is still going to give us the hat um look all right so i'm going to um take out some of the points here so i'm going to use the pen tool again to just take this out and uh, for this side i'm just going to click here and just drag this in like so and um, let's see what we have i'm going to do it again i'm just going to drag this in and this is okay for me all right so i'm going to move this to this side and just go back to the um figure object and we need to convert the object to an outline so i'm going to do that now by going to type here and say create outline here and then i'm going to change the color of this sorry change the color of this to this blue here and then i'll go straight to my effect menu here go to 3d materials and select extrude and bevel 
and the first thing i'm going to select here is going to be the inflate option here uh, so we need to change the angle of our 3d objects so this will move this here like so and just move this like so so i'm going to make my depth zero i'm going to make my volume 100 then i'll go straight to materials then um under my roundness here i'm gonna make i'm gonna make roundness 0 0.3 and metallic is going to be 0 0.68 so then let's go straight to lighten and i'm gonna make my intensity 139 because i don't want to have more no, i want it to be more brighter and um i'll make rotation let's make the rotation of the that is the angle of the light to be minus 168 the height of um, our light is going to be 55 softness 38 all right so let's make the light soft okay this is okay for now i'm going to position this here for now and i'm going to move this here so what i'm going to do now is so i'm going to apply the same settings to the hat shape here so i'm going to change the field to the same blue color beautiful all right then i'm going to move this here for now and close this because we don't need this anymore all right we need to expand the object because if we don't expand it taking it to photoshop is going to be difficult all right so i'm going to say expand appearance and i'm going to do the same move with this and go to object again and say expand appearance now we need to start with the figure inflate by hitting ctrl c on your keyboard and then I'm going to go straight to um, Photoshop and paste it by hitting Ctrl V. All right. Then I'm going to make sure that my option here is set to Smart Object. And I'm going to select the OK button. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And this should be somewhere around here. I can even rotate it a bit like so. And I'm going to select the Enter key. All right. So I want the color of my figure 5 here to be yellow like gold, all right? So we need to do that by applying a gradient map to this. And I'm going to say apply to just only the figure 5. And I'll go to the gradient editor. And I'm going to double click on this and change this to something more brownish. All right, let's just position this here. And select the OK button. And I'm going to do the same thing by double clicking to activate another slider. And this should be on um, something more yellow, like so, and select the OK button. And for this side, I'm still going to use yellow, but I'm going to use the lighter value of yellow. So I'm going to move that here, and then just move this somewhere around here. Move this close to this, and this should be close to this, like so, right? So if you really want to have more shining um, effect, you can just move this in and then, sorry, move this in, and then you have the shiny um, look but for now i don't want something too shiny so i'm going to move this out a bit okay so i'm going to select the ok button now and the next thing i'm going to do is to activate hue saturation on this and just say i want this just to apply to the figure five now the reason why i'm doing this is because i'm still not seeing that you know that gold look on the figure five so i'm going to use hue saturation to you know boost the color of the gold color by increasing this like so and I'll move this a bit to uh, this side, all right? And you see, we're beginning to see that gold look on the figure five. And for my shadow here, I hate the fact that I have this um, brown, this hard brown color. So I'm going to add a little touch of red to the shadow by activating selective color. And I'm going to select the clip icon here and change this to black. And then I'll go under my cyan here because the opposite of my cyan here is red so i'm going to move this in to add red to this so this is the before and this is the after so it's making sense then the next thing i'm going to do is to drag my background in because we need to be able to see the color of our background so as to be able to know how to play with our color correctly so i'm going to make this bigger like so and i'm going to hit the enter key and this should be behind the um 
figure 5 and I'll activate the free transform again and just make this a bit bigger and this should be somewhere here and I'm going to hit the enter key. So we can even reduce the size of this a bit and hit the enter key and this should be here. So we need to apply that effect around the balloon to the figure 5. So I'm going to hold down control and click on the thumbnail to, to activate my key selection around the figure 5 and I'll go to select and hit modify and select expand. Now I'm going to make my expand 12, all right, and hit the OK button. Then what, we, what we're going to now do is to select the lasso tool here. So we have different type of lasso tool, but we need the very first lasso tool on our, our lasso tool option here. Then I'm going to zoom in, still on the lasso tool, and I'm going to hold on alt because we need to subtract some of the edges, all right, with the lasso tool. So I'm going to just quickly do this. But make sure that when you are doing this, try not to make it too perfect because making it too perfect is not going to make us achieve what we are trying to achieve here, okay? That's it. And I'm going to do the same thing here again. Make sure you are holding down Alt when you are doing this. Never let go until you are done. I'm going to create a new layer and call this B edge. All right, then I'm going to select the OK button. Now, this needs to be behind the figure 5 layer. And I'm going to fill this layer with color. Let's just pick a color from here and use all backspace to apply the color. Now, you see that we now have the edges of our um, balloon, but this is not really looking like a 3D. Um, effect so let's just make that 3d effect um appear on this now so what i'm going to do is i'll make sure that my um foreground and background here is set to uh, black and white so to do that i'm going to click on this icon here to convert it to black and white then i'll go to filter now now make sure you have a new layer i almost forgot so make sure you could have a new layer and you can now call this b edge again facts all right then i'll go to filter I'll go to render here and choose cloud. All right. Then I'll go to filter again and go to filter gallery. So make sure you are so make sure you are on the sketch option here and select Chrome. Make sure detail is four and smoothness is set to seven. And I'm going to select the OK button now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold on Alt and place my mouse in between the B edge FX layer and the b edge layer so i'm going to position it till i see the triangle facing down option and i'm going to click to clip that inside the um, b edge layer so then i'm going to activate the free transform and just scale this down so as to have more you know details or let's just say more depth on and uh, the b, b edge fx um, layer i'm going to now put all of this in a group but, for, but what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold on hold and take away all the adjustment layer here because we need to put everything here in a group so i'm going to shift select this like so and hit ctrl g to put it in a group and i'm going to call this five all right then i'll hold on alt and just clip this back so like this let's just go back to the gradient editor and just play with things here i can move this in here like so and we can just drag this in to have more shiny but let's just move this this way and this can just go in here like so and i think this is okay and i'm going to select the okay button here like so now let's just let's go straight and drag the heart shape in and i'm going to go back to illustrator then i'm going to copy the heart shape by hitting ctrl c and I'll go back to Photoshop and paste this. Oops, you see, I mistakenly dragged this in the, on the wrong layer. So we need to drag this out. So, okay. So I'm going to clip this back by holding down Alt and just clip everything back on the figure layer. So I'm going to hold down Control. Let's just hide this so we can have more, um, you know, good view of what we're doing. So I'm going to hold down Control and click on the thumbnail of the heart layer 
again to activate the marquee and i'm going to go to select modify and hit expand again so we're still going to use 12 i'm going to select the ok uh, button and then um for this let's just add more um let's just make the expand more wider so i'm going to go back to modify again and hit expand but this time i'm just going to make it uh let's just make it two and i think yes this is okay i'll make the same move again create a new layer and call this you can just say h edge all right and just cut out the um edges of uh marquee here so i'll use the same tool again i hold down alt to subtract from the marquee like so all right so i'm gonna fill the layer with alt backspace all right now this should be behind this all right then i'll go straight to the figure five layer make a copy of this by hitting ctrl j and i'm gonna drag this and drop here and i'll collapse this then I'm going to hold on Alt and place my mouse in between the B edge FX and the hat shape and just clip this in. And the next thing I'm going to do is to put all of this in a group like we did with the figure 5. And then I'm going to go to the gradient map here. Activate the gradient map adjustment and I'm going to select the clip icon. Hide this for now and I'll act, go back to the gradient editor and come back here and just pick the color from my heart shape we can even make this more bluish like so and hit the ok button and then for this we can pick a color from here just move this up and select the ok button and select the ok button now to make this active this is what we're going to have so we can even still you know play with this by just moving this in and move this in like so and just drag this here so and i'm gonna select the ok button now if i zoom out we should have this i'll make this visible now and i'll position this i'm gonna position this here i'll activate the free transform on it and just fill this down just position this here like so let's just make it a bit bigger should select the layers and just position this here like so so let's just put it in a group and i'm gonna call this hearts okay and i'll make a copy of this and this should be behind the figure 5 layer and this should be here activate the free transform and just rotate it this way and make this a bit smaller and this should be here I'll rotate it a bit and just position this here like so and then i'm gonna make a copy of this again by dragging and drop here activate the free transform and just position this here this should be much more smaller than this and be here and so and hit the enter key all right then the next thing i'm going to do is to uh, make a copy of this heart shape here all right so for this i'm going to position this here and i'm going to call this gold heart this should be gold all right and i'm going to make a copy of this by dragging and drop on the new layer icon and i'm going to open the gold hat group folder and drag and drop here so we are going to delete this okay then i'm going to hold on alt and place my mouse in between the um gradient map and the group folder of the hat and just clip and do the same thing here and do the same thing here so then i'm going to drag this out and make this bigger all right with the free transform all right and i'm going to position this here and hit the enter key and make a copy of this with Ctrl J, and this can now be somewhere here. All right. So because we are trying to make this look like it's close to the camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce of this heart shape so as to have make it have different um, look from the uh, the initial gold color. So then um, let's see the if I go in here and just reduce the saturation of this like so all right then i'm going to i'm going to convert this to a smart objects all right and i'll go to filter select blog gallery and select field blog because we need to create what i call depth of field today so i'm going to just move this back a bit 
like so and hit the OK button. Then I'm going to do the same thing here by going inside the gold group folder, convert this to a smart object, go to filter, blog gallery, and just say field blog again. And I'm going to just make this a bit bigger than the first one. All right. And I'm going to select the OK button. So we're going to do the same move with this. So what I'm going to do is I'll right click on this and select um, the heart shape, which is this. All right, then. Sorry about that. So I'm going to right click again on this and say convert to smart objects. Go to filter. Blog gallery and say field blog. And then we are going to just make this a bit smaller like so. And I'm going to select the OK button. So I'm going to put all of this. In fact, then let us do that now. I'm going to add depth to this by adding shadow. So I'm going to start with this. All right. I'm going to start with this. So I'll right click and select the figure 5 layer like so. And I'm going to um, create a new layer like so and call this shadow then i'm going to select the ok button then what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and select this heart shape here i'm going to hold on control and click on the thumbnail of the heart shape then i'll hold down control and shift together and then click on the thumbnail of the vector heart shape all right then i'm going to close this like so and select the layer of the shadow and I'm going to go to the color picker here and just pick this color from here and just make it a little bit more ready, brownish. And I'm going to move this in here and select the OK button. Then I'm going to fill this with the color of my foreground by holding on Alt and Backspace. Then I'm going to hit Ctrl D to deselect that and move this out here a bit. And I'll go to Filter, Blur, and say Gaussian Blau. And I'm going to reduce the blur strength like so. and so hit the OK button. I'm going to move this out here like so and just reduce the opacity because I don't really, I don't want the shadow to be more um, stronger. And now I'm going to hold down Control and click on the thumbnail of the 3D um, vector that we copied from Illustrator. Then I'll do the same move again by holding down Control Shift and then click on the thumbnail of the B hedge layer i'm going to click on the add layer max button here to make the shadow go inside the figure 5 uh, layer all right then i'm going to make the same move on this layer by um, selecting i'm going to right click and i'm going to select the layer and i'm going to create a new layer above this and just call this shadow again okay then I'm going to go to the um, foreground color picker here and just pick a color from the blue and make this darker like so and select the OK button. Then I'm going to make the same move again. Hold down Control and Shift and just click on the two layers. All right. I selected this first and then make this my second click. And then I'm going to fill the layer with all the backspace again, which is the color of my foreground here, and hit Ctrl D to take away the marquee. And I'll go to filter again, and I'm going to select blur and hit the Gaussian blur option here. And I'm going to make this real big. All right, I'm going to make this real big. Go straight to um, my heart shape here and hold down Ctrl. And then I'm going to hold down Shift at the same time and click on the heart shape and then click on the hedge edge um, layer thumbnail and then i'm going to click on the layer mask add layer max button here but make sure you're on the shadow layer when doing this so i'm going to click now and then we have the same uh, move again now this is making sense already now i'm going to collapse all of all the group folders like so i'm going to collapse all the folders and i'm going to put everything here in a group yeah, it's always good to do that so as to make your, um, you know, layer panel neat. So I'm going to call this balloon. All right. Then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this layer smoke. Actually, it's not going to look like smoke, but let's just call it smoke. And I'm going to pick a color from my cloud here and select the 
OK button and select the brush tool. Now go to the brush settings and make sure your brush is set to soft round brush. And um, if you have a graphics tablet, you can go under your transfer option and change your control to pen pressure. And um, if you don't have a graphics tablet, you can easily go to flow here and change your flow to 12. But because I have a graphics tablet, I'm going to make my 100 and I'm okay with that. So I'm going to make my brush size real, real big and I'm going to just apply the brush to the layer like so. Then I'm going to drag the image of my character in here and just position this here. Alright, like so. So I'm going to just make this a bit bigger like so and hit the enter key. And if I zoom in now, you see the color of my character's jacket here is looking like um, green blue. So, But we need to now make it look like blue. So to do that, I'm going to select the um, hue saturation adjustment and I'm going to select the clip icon because I only want this to affect the um, subject here so then i'm going to just change this here i'm going to move this in here like so it's affecting the whole body of my character here but i don't want that to happen so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the pen tool here. so i'm going to change this to um, part so for those of you that don't know how to use the pen tool you can use the video up here to um, watch the video on how to use the pen tool all right so but in the exercise file of this um tutorial this image is not cropped all right it's not cropped so if you want to learn how to crop images you can also make use of the same video all right then i'm going to just um quickly crop this all right so i'm going to hit Control enter to convert the part to a marquee and i'm going to select the layer mask of the hue saturation and then i'm going to apply my foreground color to it which is black by holding on alt and backspace all right now this is the foreground here okay so i'm going to do the same move here by just popping this out all right beautiful so i'm going to do the same thing by holding on control and enter to convert the part to a marquee and i'm still going to apply the color of my foreground here by holding on alt and backspace Make sure you're on the layer mask of the um, the hue saturation. So I'm going to apply that like so. All right. Now we have this the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer mask and hit Control I to reverse the selection. Now you see we only have that hue saturation on the jacket and not on the body of our subject. So I'm going to do the same move here. Because I'm still seeing the same error. So I'm going to hit Ctrl Enter. So now that we've um, reversed the mask, so what I'm going to do now is to use Ctrl and Backspace to apply the color of my background to the layer mask of the hue saturation by holding on Ctrl and Backspace. And then we have the blue jeans like so. So the body of my subject here is not really connecting with the environment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the layer of the girl all right let's just call it girl all right i'm going to call it girl then i'm going to go to cover adjustment here and just boost this like so but we don't want this to affect the jacket so i'm going to hold on alt and duplicate the layer mask of the hue saturation and apply it to the curve like so now this is affecting the jacket but we don't want it to touch the jacket but the skin of our subject so i'm going to hit ctrl i to reverse the uh, mask like so and you see there's this unity now on the project so i'm going to select the hue saturation layer because i'm still not feeling the look of my subject here i want it to have i want the skin to have this little touch of red so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select selective color here and i'll go under gray here and i'm just going to apply red to it because the opposite of cyan here is red so i'm going to add red to it by just pushing this this way all right now this is looking more like it and i love it all right then now um, the next thing we're going to do is to add our coverty so i'm going to drag this and drop here all right it's called coverty all right so i'm just going to make this a bit smaller all right and um yeah this is okay Okay, and I'll make a copy of this. Just position this here. Activate the free transform 
right click and say flip horizontal and this should be here like so should just go up a bit and i'll make a copy of this and this should be above the balloons and this should just come right here like so and i'm going to add a layer max to this select the brush to reduce the brush size and go to the brush settings and make sure that transfer is turned off go to brush tip here and make sure you are using the hard brush so if your flow is still set to 12 here remember to turn it back to 100 all right and make sure that your foreground here is set to black because the opposite of um, the color of our layer mask here is what we need on it all right so i'm just going to use black to take out the confetti on the project like so then i'm going to make a copy of this and this can now go somewhere here like so all right this is looking more like it then we need to take this to camera row, but before we take this to camera row, we need to stamp visible of the project by holding down ctrl shift alt and e so stamp visible is more like taking the screenshot of the project all right so then i'll convert this to a smart object all right because um, your camera row may not look the way you want it on the project so it's always good to do this so you can always go back and you know tweak the look of um things all right so i'll go to filter here and say camera row filter now here we are on camera row and i'm going to start with the basics and under my basic here i'm just going to um add more contrast to this so as to just boost the shadow on the project all right and for my highlight i'm just going to reduce that because i need to reduce the brightness on the project for my shadow here we need to just make the shadow more you know more stronger and for my white here which is on the outfit of the girl and just this part of the project and some of the cloud we need to increase the white the whites <laughs> all right then um for my um vibrance here i'm just going to increase the bright brands just to just you know boost the colors around the project and i'm going to close um, this and go to curve we don't need curve all right i'll go to sharpen and i'm going to increase sharpen so as to add more contrast to the pixels like so and i'm going to close the, the details here under the color mixer uh yeah so for the color mixer here we need to just reduce the a bit all right just reduce the i mean you reduce the orange a bit and then um for the yellow we're just going to reduce it a bit so as to just give the project that you know gold um you know look all right then um for my blue here i'm just going to um reduce the blue also or let's just increase the blue let's increase the blue and um yeah that's it so i'm going to close this all right then on that the effect here i'm going to add noise all right then i'm going to add more grain to this all right grain simply means noise okay so i'm going to add more noise and i think this is okay then i'm going to select the okay button and let's see the before and after before and after beautiful so it's time for me to add my um details all right so i'm going to start with the name of the girl and i'm going to um, select the text tool and just click here and paste it so for you for those of you that care to know the name of the font i'm using is called fat boy slim so i'm going to just change this like so and position this here so if this is the name of the font here it's called fat boy slim and i'm going to just activate the free transform on it and just rotate it a bit and make it a bit bigger then i'm going to make a copy of this position this here double click this so i already have the text typed here so i'm just going to paste it all right and make this a bit smaller all right then i'm gonna just put that here so i'm gonna use calibre bold all right then i'll go to the color here and choose blue here and make this blue the darker value of blue all right and select the ok button and this should have so this should have zero zero all right and i'm gonna make the letters close to each other by increase by reducing the tracking and this should be here then i'll copy the dates it's thursday so i'll make a copy of this by hitting ctrl j and just position this here and then i'm gonna paste this and uh, okay and this should go up a bit like so 
all right then i'm gonna make a duplicate of the venue just position this here and copy the rsvp's email address which is me all right so i'm the rsvp okay so i'm just gonna paste that here and this should not be on cap all right and this can be on cap okay and i'm going to just position this here all right we can even just reduce the size of the RSVP a bit and just position this here and um yeah so this is the final project i'm sure you enjoyed this tutorial if you have not subscribed remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to hit the post notification bell so you get notified when i post my tutorials share like and comment on this video and if you're able to achieve any project with the help of this tutorial simply post it on your instagram page and remember to tag me my instagram handle is at scissor graphics i'll see you again in the next one peace